I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Good question, Hux. Very good question. We'll get to that. Action has always been the cornerstone of cinema. It's been there from the beginning, and it comes in all shapes and sizes. From the silent era, the classics, westerns, war movies, the craziness of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and today. We all love it, and a lot of our favourite films and directors are known for it. Now, don't get me wrong. We all love a bit of romance. And drama may win the awards, but action gets us to the cinema. Good action will also have a sense of reality. Even if that reality is set off in a far off world, we want to feel on their world these things could happen. Because we all know when something doesn't feel right, and even the greats get it wrong sometimes. Good action should bring us something new. It should always be exciting, and it should never, ever be boring. This brings us to, yes, you guessed it, drumroll please, Big Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi. Now, I've already talked about the ridiculous bombers. Please, no more magnet talk. And the incredible throne room scene. Oh, that touched a nerve. This time, it's that exciting chase and the final battle. Fucking assholes. The chase in The Last Jedi must be one of the most boring and stupid plots put to film. If this was in a weekly sci-fi series, it wouldn't hurt to miss it. People, we have all seen Star Wars before. We have seen other sci-fi and fantasy films. We all have an imagination. A slow chase based around a fuel problem. This is the best Lucas film and Ryan Johnson could come up with to stretch our imaginations. And we all know, if you want to have a fuel problem combined with a chase, this is how you do it. It has curving torpedoes. It has ships that not only stop but fall backwards when they run out of fuel. Self-sacrifice for no reason. Stop steering. Go to the other ship. It's been an honor, Admiral. Where are you going, Ren? You're just going to pop a bit of a handbrakey to get out of here. Seriously, how the fuck does he get out? He's in a tunnel with a dead end that's about to blow up. He must have some cool maneuver to get out. If he does, can we see it? The choice of what to show and what not to show in this film is mind-boggling. Yeah, mind-boggling. You know, when things are so crazy, it gets your thoughts all trapped like in a bottle. The worst example of completely lazy storytelling is... What happened? What happened? She took Snoke's escape craft. That sounds interesting. Can we see that? And she met up with Chewie. Wow. She escapes Kylo, runs around an enemy ship with no weapons, finds Snoke's escape pod, steals it, and rendezvous with Chewie. All off screen. <laughs> Amazing. She just jumps from here to here. You think the protagonist escaping would be an interesting part of the story. I hope the Avengers Endgame isn't so lazy. Tony, you're back. Yep. <sighs> Escape pod. Oh, tell me about it. No, not important. Back to the chase. Ships just come and go. Remember they're running for their life? Why don't they try and save some of the other people on the shuttles that have hyperdrive? They could have packed this with people. What about the Falcon? That could have saved a few. Maybe one of them should have brought back some fuel. But the line that turns this from just a bad rowing decision into one big ass plot hole. But you're watching movies wrong. Piss off tool is this line. We can't blow up three tiny cruisers. I left faster and lighter, sir. Sorry, what? I left faster and lighter, sir. They're lighter? Things don't weigh anything in zero gravity. Mass, yes, weight, no. Look at the size of these things. I reckon this thing would pick up some speed. Let's agree for some strange reason the ship with the massive thrusters can't catch them. What about the Star Destroyers? Do they also have the top speed that is exactly the same as Snoke's ship? Wow, that is super convenient for the plot. Light speed, light speed, anyone? No, no light speed, it's not my fault. If only someone had remembered that Star Destroyers have light speed. 
And that Gulch Rave, we won't last long against those Star Destroyers. Okay, so what about all the fighters just sitting there? <laughs> Even when they did attack, how many did they send? I think it was three plus Kylo. This group of, well, who really knows how many people are such a threat. They just blow up Starkiller Base. They must be destroyed. But fuck it. Just send a couple of fighters. Why? They have hundreds, if not thousands of TIE fighters. Why wouldn't you send them? This could finish the war. Can't cover you at this distance. Return to the fleet. When is the Empire slash First Order worried about protecting their fighters? So this amazing space chase only works as long as we all forget everything we've seen in the previous films. I don't know what's more surprising, an audience that can turn off their brains that far or the staff at Lucasfilm that don't care. Did someone say greed over quality? You do know there are writers and directors that can fix these problems. The bit that really adds to the long list of slaps to George's beautiful hairy face. What? Is that all of this, everything we've enjoyed for 40 years, started with a chase. A chase that changed not only movies, but pop culture forever. An opening shot that we'd never seen before. It was thrilling. The Star Destroyer felt like it went on forever. And it went for a total of 90 seconds. Come on, Ryan. What's your new great out of this world space fantasy story? What? A space chase that goes for two and a half hours out of the millions of options to go with. This is the one you're going to choose? The final battle. Our hero's going against all odds to take on the First Order. Ryan's really going to show us his skills as a director here. <laughs> oh, well, that, that is a lot of people. Oh, and they have ships. Hold up. Hang on. Wait a minute. Let's back this up a bit. Why are nearly all of the Resistance sent outside to fight TIE fighters and AT-ATs to protect Leia and a handful of people? Here they are, outside a large blast-proof door that may get breached, getting slaughtered when they could be behind said large door being protected from air attack and walkers. What military genius thought of this? We gotta take out that cannon. <laughs> Sanitation? <laughs> Should, uh, should we stand in front of the door or behind the door? Are you fucking stupid? These aren't the gates to a city where a population is at risk. The only thing to protect is themselves. The resistance is in that mine. No, they're not. They're all out here. There's like six people inside. Oh, you mean Leia. Give yourself up, woman. Save the others. Look at how many troops there are. Look at the size of this cave. You don't think it would have made more sense to have hundreds of troops waiting inside to pick off the First Order as they walk through the small hole? A group of people this stupid deserve to die. Get that shield door down! Nice writing, Ryan. So instead of defending the cave once the door has been breached, they all go outside to protect the door. Brilliant! Wow, look how far away the First Order landed. Would have been nice to see how they landed the AT-ATs, but hey, you have to copy Empire. So they're heading straight at them and do they have a plan? Because they don't fire a single shot. They drive straight at them, fly around a bit and then run away. What am I meant to get from this scene? Most piss weak battle ever. Come on, some of cinema's best battles are in no win situations. That doesn't mean you can't take out some of the enemy. At least fire a shot. There's no glimmer of hope, no feeling of, look, they could win. They don't even damage a walker, let alone take one out. The saddest part of watching a losing battle is seeing the hope fading our heroes. Seeing personal sacrifice, you want to feel they came so close but still failed. We get none of that. Surprisingly, Ray is the only person to take out any of the enemy. And not just one at a time, as I've mentioned in a previous video. Woo! I like this! You fucking would. You're better than Han Solo at it. She never misses. Being unbelievably good is not the problem. I love you. Just give us a hint as to why. Blow that piece of junk out of the sky! All fighters! That doesn't seem a good military decision. All of them? Throw them off! All of them! Oh, they hate that ship! They do? How do they even know that ship? I get Kylo, but the others? Has old Rennie been complaining about his dad and his ship again? Has everyone else just want to destroy it to shut him up? Even if they'd heard about the ship that blew up the second Death Star, how, fuck knows, how would they know that this is the same ship? They haven't even been at war for 30 years. This ship hasn't flown in years. What in this world was once a rust bucket with a few tricks, what a piece of junk, is now fucking famous and invincible. So without firing a single shot, they decide to turn around. Okay. Ming, it's too late, don't do 
it! No! For a character that has been totally wasted, this would have given Finn some reason to exist. Have you ever stood near anything hot? If metal is melting here, the top of your unprotected head would be fucking melted. So Finny's doing us all a favour and sacrificing himself when BANG! The sack of potatoes jumps through a wormhole and saves him. How did she get there so fast? Look at how far back she is! Heading in the opposite direction, she not only turned around, she flew twice as fast, made a left hand turn and precisely took him out. I don't even care they both survived the crash, which seems unlikely. This is B grade direction on an A grade budget. We have directors like George Miller who can make a two hour action orgasm and Ryan can't piece together a 10 minute scene to make sense. Great choice, Kathleen. Like a group that's saying, okay, everyone tweet Ryan Johnson those at the same time. All from Russian accounts. Are you serious? Russian accounts exclusively. <laughs> then after Rose sexually harasses Finn. Bro, not cool. And potentially kills everyone in the process. We are meant to believe Finn drags her back fucking miles. Hold up, what happened to all those resistance fighters? If they escaped back into the cave, they all disappeared. Did they all die? If they did, where are the bodies? Could we see what happened to them? Did they fight bravely? Hang on, they've already disappeared when the cannon starts. Who shot down these TIE fighters? Ray, I bet it was Ray. We have been rooting for the rebels for 40 years. By the way, rooting means something quite different in Australia. <laughs> gun is digging into my hip. For 40 years, if you're going to kill off what's left of the rebellion, shouldn't it have some meaning? Can't we give George's legacy some dignity? We don't even see one act of heroism from the troops. No feeling whatsoever. They're here, then they're gone. Bit embarrassing. This guy did way better action scenes. That's awkward. So we are left with setups that have no imagination. They've tracked us. We'll be out of fuel. They're faster and lighter. Them half gutted skims, Peters. I'll take out that cannon. And meaningless payoffs with lots and lots of running away. Last Jedi has some of the worst action you will ever see in a big budget movie. And not just any movie, a Star Wars movie. It's boring and fuck me, it doesn't make any sense. That's what happens when a producer will only hire directors they can dictate to. Come on Kathleen, back it up a bit. What is it with you and directors? Fighting what we hate, saving what we love. <laughs>